while at about again. As you can notice, I am doing a voiceover this time. And I'm sorry about that, but that just happened because my microphone didn't record. Anyways, in this video we will be doing a, or I will be doing a HP laptop and we will remove the BIOS password off of this one. I bought this off of Findotem, which is a Norwegian online marketplace, sort of like Craigslist in the US. Now, the thing is, this was sold uh, at a v by a company that takes in uh, computers that were leased by other companies and they refurbish them and sell them at a reduced cost. But they had a few of these uh, HP ProBook G no uh, HP ProBook 640 G2 laptops that they got in from a um, company that had set in a BIOS password and they didn't remember it. Uh, I figured I'd buy one because I have both the knowledge and the tools and everything to fix that and let's do that in this video. Um, it kind of surprised me that they didn't really do this themselves because the the job of removing the password isn't really all that difficult. But anyways, I'm happy to get a very cheap but very good laptop. It has a 8 gigabytes of RAM. It has a 128 gig M.2 drive. And as you can see now, I'm just booting it up and we will go into the try to go into the BIOS, but the BIOS does not cooperate. enter password there's just nobody remembered the boss password not at all so my trusty Squire SES126 taking off the screws there are eight screws for the back cover and yeah it's very simple and you just pop the back cover right off now you can see that the BIOS chip is there on the left just below the M.2 drive and what I did try, I tried to use the clip while it was still on the board but the clip I have it just didn't get a good connection so I had to dig out the Kapton tip to try and protect the plastic a little bit. I did manage to sort of melt a little bit of the plastic, well it warped a little bit, you'll see that later on. So some uh, flux on the BIOS chip. Uh, this is the 16 megabyte BIOS chip. Uh, that's the only one you need to remove. And I decided to just take it off because I didn't want to bother trying to fix the clip. Uh, much easier to just take the chip off. And that just. Uh, in this case, I forgot to turn the <laughs> I forgot to turn the uh, scene over uh, scene mode over to the microscope. So, uh, that's why you just see that. There's the BIOS chip. Uh, the pin one is down on the right side. Here I have connected to my uh, Raspberry Pi 4B running Kali Linux, which I love. And this is just me using Flash ROM because I find Flash ROM. And Flash ROM did detect it, but it had several chip detections so I had to specify which chip and you all, all you do that is you use the C argument and I just copy and paste the chip name and it reads the flash and that takes a while uh, 16 megabyte over SPI takes quite a bit and here is a very important part verify you can see that it says it has been read but always always 
always verify that the file you read or dumped matches what's actually on the BIOS. And all you do is you just change the R read to a V for verify and everything else is the same but you just need to verify against the file that you just dumped. When you press enter it'll start the verification process which takes just as long as it takes to read the chip or dump the chip. In this case I got a phone call so I had to uh, I had to uh, just stop the recording after I press enter here in just a bit and I had to go outside and play nurse. Well, it's kind of funny because in one case you're repairing a laptop in another case you're la re uh, you're repairing a human being. Anyways, the reading is done, verifying is done and all I do now is I connect a USB drive to the Kali box, I mount it to a folder and then I just simply copy the extracted bin file over to the flash drive. Kali is set up so you uh, you can't do anything as root, you have to use uh, sudo, you can't really just log in as root or anything, so you just do that, and because I haven't added my user add to the DAL app, I use the sudo and mount the USB drive I inserted, and there you can see the tool is on the uh, USB drive. Uh, it's RC Unlocker. You can find that on Bad Caps. Uh, bad Caps is something you really need to be a member of when you repairing laptops. Uh, there are several other resources, of course, too, but Bad Caps really is. And uh, the RC Unlocker was made by Rhetorical Cheese, a user on there, and this thing will remove the password from a bunch of uh, different HP laptops so yeah I can absolutely absolutely recommend downloading that tool so unmount it and here I have the uh, Acer laptop that I fixed earlier uh, because um, I had planned on using the uh, laptop that I am fixing because I couldn't read with the chip on, I had to take it in. So I just put in the thumb drive or USB drive. Uh, I copy the bin file over to our, I move the bin file over to the RC Unlocker uh, executable folder where the executable is. And then you just simply click, uh, hold and drag the bin file onto the executable simple as that that will do a process in the background and you will see in just a little while you get a I will zoom in on it you will get a window that comes up that tells you unlock finished there I will zoom in on that it's made by a rhetorical cheese and it tells you what to do it tells you all the information from the BIOS file it tells you what to do you have to reset the BIOS after this is done. And it creates a copy of the BIOS file, the binary file, that is just the same name, but it's also underscore unlocked. So that's the fixed binary file that you have to write back to the BIOS and then solder it back on the board. To just close the program, the RC Unlocker tool, 
take out the thumb drive and put it back in the color box which I'm using or whatever machine you're using to flash or read so back in mount the USB drive and copy the bin file over the un the unlocked bin file over to the Kali drive just so you don't have any bugs with the reading from a USB drive over the USB protocol back over and stuff like that copy it over to your drive and do the process from there now in this you make sure that you erase the ROM uh, that I have connected back in the clip the BIOS chip you make sure that you erase it first before you write anything to it now technically the flash ROM will do all this for you if you write a new file but I like to do it anyway just to be safe it tells you everything on the bottom of the screen and of course when you want to write the new file all you do is change the E which is erase you change that to a W for write you specify the new unlocked binary file and in this case also specify the programmer to use minus is CH341B but the A is what you use and specify the chip name and it will go through the process this is a long process because it will erase the chip it will write to the chip and it will do the verification for you because I didn't specify the no verify argument so it does it for you so if you want to be extra safe do a verification process again but you don't have to because flash ROM does that for you Now you can just unmount the USB drive and you solder the BIOS chip back on the board. I had cleaned up the previous chip or the previous flux and what I do now is I just add a little bit more flux just so that I get a good solder joint and this time I actually did remember to put the scene on OBS which I'm using to record into microscope mode so you can see the chip now the big white line you can see there indicates where pin 1 and pin 1 is that blue dot so you just make sure that they are aligned Just make sure that you get a good joint here and hot air. I had to use, well, which is why I did manage to warp the plastic a little bit. I had to because I could have gone over with low melt solder first and then it would have come off at a much lower temperature. But I didn't have any uh, low melt solder left. So I had to use, uh, I had to go up to 415 degrees. Now you can just remove the cap on tape and I like to use a tweezer just to go over the pins to make sure there is a good connection on each pin. And of course clean it off as best you can with isopropyl alcohol. When you're doing rip electronic repairs you really you, you can't ever have enough ISO. Okay, so let's put the back cover back on. And I will. I felt. Uh, I felt positive that this would be all good because I tested everything. So I just put the back cover back on and decided that if there should be an issue, I'll just take it off again. It's just eight screws and I have the tool. So let's flip it over and connect some power and let's see what it says if it's working it. 
power it on and of course now I can't remember if it's escape or delete that enters the settings menu but so I just hit both of them and it comes up with the screen you'll see in just a second like this and you go into BIOS mode and hopefully there's no password Ta-da! password is removed now in this case uh, I decided to just go ahead and restore all of the BIOS to factory defaults and that will reboot the computer and go back into the BIOS again once more and just verify the time and date and that everything still looks like it should you can see 8 giga by RAM you can see that it's an i5 6300U running at 2.4 gigs I just checked for a tag or anything it's everything's reset And just save the BIOS, exit the BIOS saving settings. Save changes, yes. And let's just let it restart and boot back into Windows. Now this is a quick little computer and for the price I paid for it that's astonishing that they didn't do a BIOS repair back into Windows and I will just go ahead and lift it a little bit to enter the pin code on this one I used a pin code I just didn't and you're into Windows so the computer is fully functioning and no more BIOS password on this one. So a big thank you to Rhetorical Cheese on uh, on bad caps. Now here's the thing. In this video I made a big mistake. And this could have gone really really bad but I was kind of lucky and it just shows that even those of us who make a lot of repairs we also are susceptible to making errors and I will let you guys in the comment tell me what I did wrong I noticed it when I put the back cover back on and I, I can't believe I did that but hey what can you do anyways thanks for watching guys I will see you in my next video and let's not make this mistake again bye